Hey guys, nice to see you again. My name is Florian Schaeffer and this is a three-part series about time series calculation and prediction of time series results with machine learning tools. So this will be a three-part series. The first part is about calculating the time series data. The second part is about preparing the data for training. And the third part is about machine learning based power flow predictions with an artificial neural network. Let's get started with the first part, preparing the data and calculating the time series for a grid called Simbesh. We start by installing Simbench, which is a data set provided by our university. You can find Simbench under simbench.de. There's also an English version, but uh, you just need to get on downloads here and then click on GitHub repositories. And here you will find the data you will need to do the time series calculation. The Simbench package is available on pip. You can see that here. So if you want to install it, then just open a terminal. I think in the, in the Windows it should be an Anaconda prompt and then just hit pip install Simbench and then it will download Simbench for you and install the necessary files. Okay, assuming that we have that, uh, let's look at the, the website. Uh, here you see some tutorials and the important part is this one here, the tutorial here. Uh, which shows you how to use the Simbench networks. What you see is in Jupyter Notebook examples how to use this, the, the grid and how the data set, what the data set includes. For example, an extra high voltage grids, two high voltage grids, some medium voltage grids, and so on. And these can be compared. And all of these grids have also some time series with them. And what we will be using in this tutorial is this HV grid for now. Okay, what we need is this code. This code says that we want this, the first HV grid, which is um, a mixed grid or the urban, let's take the urban grid. And um, uh, for, for year zero, this, these year codes give you something, it's, I think it's explained down here somewhere. Uh, this gives you some scenarios about now and the future and so on. After you have set up Simbench working, you can import it as always as Simbench, for example, here. And then what we need is the grid code. We just copied, which is here, this one. And then we get a net with sb.getSimbench uh, net from this grid code. So you just have to specify the grid code and then you will get the net. And the profiles for from the time series calculations, you can uh, get in a similar way. You just say um, get absolute profiles for this net and then you want to have the profiles instead of study cases set to true. And then you can, for example, print the profiles, which is a dictionary containing some keys for the elements stored in the profiles. And uh, the values are the profiles in what are as data frames. So if you run that, you will see that you will get some dictionary keys. You have profiles for loads, for um, the, Q, the P values of loads, the Q values of loads, and for the steady generators, you have also P values. Uh, if you print the net, you will, oh, I can increase the font size, sorry. Um, if you print net, then you will see that you have several elements in this grid. For example, here you have um, 79 um, loads, 98 static generators, but no gens or no um, storages in, in this scenario. In the future scenario, you will have them, but here you don't have them. So you only need the profiles for load and the static generators. Now to start the time series calculation, we need the profiles. So first we will get from the profiles here, uh, the data for the loads. So here we say uh, the P values, PMW values for the loads, and then we get the Q values as well. So here we can get the Q values for the loads and also we get PMW for uh, the static generators. So now we have all the data we need. Um, you can print that for example, so you see how it looks like and we could also create a little plot. So import matplotlib and then use the p-values 
maybe you should sum it up because there are many uh, generators in there and then uh, you will you won't see that much so we sum them up and say s gen p values labeled then and then we will uh, show the legend so we will see uh, how it will look like and hit the start button and what we've been doing now is we uh, got from the grid code the net here uh, then the profiles are being extracted here we just open the dictionary and then we will create a plot for the loads and the estrogens so you see, you see the load values over time the static generator series over time and what you see is that the generation is much higher has much higher peaks than the load which is fairly um, not constant but but not so high over time uh, here you see also the data frame. So the data frame here has in the, the columns are the, the element index and the rows are here uh, the time steps. So here you have um, one year in 15 minute resolution. It's a leap here if you wonder. Okay, now we want to do the time series calculation and for this we have to do, uh, do some additional imports. So we need the time series module from Panda Power and we also need a controller. I've explained that in the last video, I think um, we want to have a constant controller um, which just changes um, from import, which just changes the values for each time step. And we will need a data source from the time series module, which creates um, the, the corresponding format for this cons controller here. So in here, these are data frames as I've just shown. In here are the time series and for each time series we will create a controller for so for this net and for the element um, a static generator, we will uh, control the variable PMW and the element in index is for every element in our uh, grid here for the static generators and the profile name uh, can be obtained, for example, here from the columns of, of this data frame. So these are the profile names. Okay, and the element index is in our case uh, the same, but it's uh, you get it from that S gen index here, for example. And then you have to just have to specify the data source, and the data source must be in the, in the correct format, as I've said. So you will have to create a DF data for the static generator. Uh, we do this now three times, so we've done it for the s -gens, but you can have as many cons controller as you want. And we want to have another one, for example, here for uh, the loads, and we want another one for the Q values of the loads, which are available as profiles as well. So here uh, we just have to change it. Of course, you can do it with a loop, but I think it's quite explicit now. The last thing we now have to do is to create a so-called output writer, uh, which saves us the data we, we get from the time series calculation to our disk. And in our case, we want to have it, for example, as a JSON. We could also have it as an Excel file, but we want to have it as a JSON now. And then we can finally run the time series module by just calling run time series. And if you start that now, we will get the simbench data, the net, the profiles, extract the, the profiles for loads and for the S-gen, create the constant controllers here, define the output writer to say where to store the data and into which file format, and then the time series calculation starts, as you can see here at the bottom. This calculation will take now about 10 minutes, depending on your machine, and in the end you will have two folders, one containing the results of the line loadings, the second one containing the results of the bus voltage magnitudes. You can also specify other results if you want to. I've shown that in the last video, but for now this should be sufficient. We just want to have the data for the machine learning training we will do in the next video.